Welcome to Perimenopause How. This video is about hot flashes, or hot flushes as we call them in the United Kingdom. So 80% of women get hot flushes as part of their menopausal symptoms, and hot flushes are caused when your estrogen level starts to drop. Now, in your 40s, your estrogen level starts to decrease a little bit, so your background level is a bit lower. Uh, the times you may notice that you get hot flushes in the early days are around your period and perhaps either before or after ovulation. And there are other videos in my series that explain um, this particular phenomena. So if you look at the video called Understanding Your Cycle, that will take you through the times of your cycle uh, where you might experience these symptoms and explain a bit more about the hormone levels and so on. But anyway, going back to the hot flushes, they're caused by low estrogen, and in particular, the effect of low estrogen upon this little gland in the brain called the hypothalamus. So as you can see from this picture where it's shown in red, it's a tiny little endocrine gland, but it does an awful lot of things in your body. And one of the things that it does is it acts as a thermostat to your body. Now, the low estrogen levels just make it go absolutely bonkers. So it's almost as though your body's thermostat just went crazy. So a lot of women also get chills and shivers in addition to feeling too hot and getting these quite dramatic hot flashes. So a lot of women write, oh dear, I'm having chills, and they don't understand that really it's the same thing as having a hot flash. It's just the opposite side of the coin. And in fact, they're both caused by the same thing, which is the malfunction of the hypothalamus gland. The hypothalamus deals with a lot of other things, as you can see from this video, and you can stop the video and look at the list if you want to. So you understand that the malfunctioning of the hypothalamus actually causes a lot of other symptoms apart from hot flushes and chills. So actually, these could be contributing to a lot of menopausal symptoms. But what science knows about hot flashes at the present day is rather limited. So what I'm going to talk about now is something that is a bit of a theory of mine rather than an actual fact. Now, what you may notice is that you can bring on a hot flash more or less at will if you want to by thinking about something that makes you feel a little um, anxious or awkward or embarrassed or anything like that, which is really the same kind of mechanism as when you might blush from embarrassment. So if you had a, suddenly had a thought like, oh dear, I've left the oven on at home, then that could bring on a hot flash. And the reason for this, I think, is that the hypothalamus gland is actually very rich in receptors for stress hormones, the stress hormones that are made by your adrenal glands. And so basically it sets the hypothalamus off again and it's malfunctioning and then causes a hot flash. I can't tell you because I'm not a doctor exactly what the relationship is. All I know is that the hypothalamus is very sensitive to sex hormones. That's why it starts to malfunction in menopause when the estrogen level gets very low. But also it's extremely sensitive to um, adrenal gland hormones. So those are your stress hormones, basically. So if you start feeling worried or anxious, your adrenal glands output adrenaline. And that also has a knock-on effect on the hypothalamus because it's so rich in receptors for those uh, hormones too. So this is why medicines such as antidepressants that make you feel less worried have a knock-on effect on reducing the amount of hot flushes that you have. And there are other medicines that also do that. So this may be responsible for some women who smoke marijuana or take it in other ways like edibles and so on. They feel more relaxed and they have less hot flushes. That might be one of the mechanisms by which that works. 
So I, I can't prove that this is the way that it works. It just seems to me that that's very likely. And the adrenals at the time of menopause actually start to take over some of our hormone production because your ovaries stop making estrogen, they stop making progesterone, they continue to make a bit of testosterone, which is interesting because they don't just shrivel up and die. They do carry on doing some things. But the adrenal glands take over the production of the estrogen, various different types of estrogen that it makes. And so does the adipose fat, which is one of the reasons why we tend to pile on fat, especially around the middle, is that our body thinks, oh, that fat is making a bit of estrogen for me and I'm missing estrogen. And <laughs> so being a bit fatter helps your body to produce more estrogen. So I'm aware that I'm waffling a bit now, but I thought that was a really interesting take on the mechanisms behind hot flashes, which, as I've said, are not entirely understood by science yet anyway. There are some new medicines on the way that have gone into testing, by the way, that act on this sort of hypothalamic circuit. And they're not HRT, which is something that's very good news for women who don't want to take HRT. What I also wanted to mention before I close is that anxiety can cause hot and cold flashes by that same mechanism that I was just mentioning in that the hypothalamus has all those receptors for adrenal hormones. So when you are anxious anyway, no matter your age, then that can give you hot and cold flushes. This is a video here on a channel called Beyond Blue Official, Get to Know Anxiety, Hot and Cold Flushes. So thinking that hot and cold flushes are entirely and only something that is caused by menopause is actually a, a complete mistake. Night sweats is another um, symptom that can be a symptom of many, many different syndromes, illnesses and whatnot. In particular, I suffer from arthritis and I used to have terrible night sweats over 10 years ago. And actually they've got a bit better. <laughs> now I'm going through perimenopause, <laughs> got a bit better, which is uh, ironic somewhat. Uh, but yeah, so they can be a symptom of other things. It might not necessarily be to do with your hormones. Elsewhere, there is a lady called Jude Tyson, who's a British woman who has suffered terribly with hot flushes. And if you put her name into YouTube, you'll bring up a load of videos about her experiences, which are very interesting to watch. I recommend those to you. Some people seem to think that being a bit hot is the same as a hot flush, but it's not. There are all sorts of different levels of heat feeling when you get into perimenopause. I think you, you do get hotter as a person. You run a bit hotter. But that's not the same as having a hot flash. A hot flash is a dramatic thing where sometimes you'd be dripping with sweat. You tend to feel very irritable. You want to rip off your clothes. They can sometimes be so all encompassing and dramatic that you feel really tired afterwards and you need to sit down and recover. They can be very dramatic. There is no guarantee that these are going to stop after you've been through menopause. They could do, but then again, they might not. We're all different. Most women feel better after the menopause. Some women carry on having a few symptoms and that is most of women but a few women do carry on having symptoms throughout life. Anyhow, I shall close here. If you found this video interesting or informative, then like and subscribe and all that jazz. Thank you for listening.